time of the sixth century, this majestic yet violence-torn land to which I was one name, no single leader. Several centuries of Romans had ruled, but their Caesars lost interest at last and withdrew, leaving behind the rugged terrain to the defiant tribes that had gained a foothold. This vast island now belonged to us. Unrelated peoples mostly come from other shores. Our different customs and appearance set apart the fair-haired Saxon from the dark-eyed Angle, the efficient Jute from the restless Celt and the war-loving Pict. Though there was space for all, rich pastures and forests filled with game, it was a time of great turmoil and distrust. Each village thought of itself first, its own survival, the sole concern of elder and son alike. Little or no feeling was held for the problems of others. So it followed that plunder, chaos and bloodshed were a common part of life in these insular communities. <laughs> Finally, I reached my manhood. I also found myself chieftain of my people, a small struggling tribe in the West. I was a Celt called Arthur. The fierce skirmishes of my youth would grow into major battles in later years. Tales of my exploits would also grow, well beyond the truth of them. These were the simple facts. I was a warrior, if pressed. <laughs> By preference, a hunter who could roam freely within our natural borders. An orphan, blessed with a fellow foundling named Kai for a brother. Both of us reared by the wise and courageous Lud whose silver forearm served him almost as well as the one he lost in the Battle of Mordred's Field. And above all, I did have a dream, a vision, that this unnamed land of ours one day could and would become a great nation. the ledge at the back of the village, then through the forest. Now, let's see who'll be first man. Everybody ready? Now! Let me say from the beginning, I enjoyed being the leader of my people. The respect given me by the young, the old, and one's peers provided a true source of pleasure and a sense of power. I can't deny I was above taking some satisfaction from that, too, in my youth. But the sense of responsibility for their welfare, their progress, was ever uppermost in my thoughts. It forced me, on many occasions, to make decisions, to take risks I could not share with them.
Don't tell the village. Arthur is dead. With Arthur dead, who will now lead his men? <laughs> They're not great in size, but by all but holy they can fight. And with Arthur dead, now that rabble will follow me. We offer those poor frightened people of Arthur our protection. And if they refuse, then we attack. The man who adds Arthur's strength to his own will be unbeatable. Let it be her with the holy. Arthur's encampment lies in a key position. With that, I could make myself secure. We leave within the hour! With Arthur dead, the others will have no stomach for a fight. Child, out of my way. I am Herwood the Holy. And I'm Abbot the Crafty. Going to Arthur's encampment. Though the slouch in like a lot of old half women. Arch like the legions of Rome. They got you too, eh? Dirk the crafty. Dirk with the extra eye. Ah! In his belly button. You got us all now. Well? What are you waiting for? Kill us. We're not women that we have to prepare. I thought too little of you, Kai. I should have known I watch you breathing down Arthur's neck often enough. You tricked us. You tricked yourselves. By your own greed. How many times have I asked you for this meeting? How many times have you refused? We had better things to do. Like plundering each other? Ripping and warring amongst yourselves like brainless wolves? Tearing apart our people, leaving them helpless before any Saxon war party? You've done your share. When I'm attacked, I defend myself and my people. But there is a greater enemy now. Kurdi, a Saxon, moves forward year by year, cutting down our forests, taking more of our land. None of us is strong enough to beat him on our own. We must make a pact. A pact? With a moon-blasted priest, an imitation Roman, and a weasel? Blasted <laughs> Outside is a stone. Beneath the stone is a sword. The man who can lift that sword above his head will be our leader. The stone had been Ludd's idea. We hoped if our strategy was successful, these petty chieftains would finally I respond to common one. sense. Ludens! Maponas! Help me now! Bonus, no dead, barley, what go? 
Godfather! <laughs> there is only one God. Mithras, God of the legions, God of the sun, symbol of the bull. What's that to have your gods and your bulls? There is only one bull, and it is I, Mark of Cornwall. Stand aside! I. Your turn. Let's see how you get on. The muscles of a girl child. <laughs> Are you no pleased with yourself? Maybe you think you can move it. No. But I know how it can be moved. All I want is one hand from each man. Here. 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 And here. Now. Push! <laughs> ha! That proves nothing. You did it with our help. Exactly. And that's how I'll beat Curdy. With your help, none of us can do it alone. Together we will roll him into the sea as easily as we shifted that rock. He's right. The Romans had the saying for it. Divide and rule. That's why Kurdig wins. I ask each of you to put half his army at my disposal. What? Uh. <laughs> then I can fight Kurdig on equal terms. But never! Uh. Never! Do you hear what he's saying? Then there'd be nothing to stop you attacking us, marching on us, one by one, and slaughtering us. There's nothing to stop him slaughtering you now. Kai, they're swords. That is soon as give the snake back his fangs. Let's kill them now and make an end of it. You've seen and heard them? You can't argue with jackals? No, Kai. I must speak to Kerdig. Ambrose, you say? Mark of Cornwall? And Howard the Holy and Dirk. They're meeting in council to join forces against you. Whose idea was this brotherhood of wolves? Arthur's. Oh. Dangerous man. Arthur of the West. He thinks before he fights. <laughs> they have few men. Strike now, and you get them all. Arthur among them. Why should a Celt deliver Arthur into my hands? I went before him at the seat of judgment. He gave judgment to my enemy. Wisely, I say. You're a rogue if ever I saw one. <laughs> See what I think it is, Hengist. We'll be a leader. You give justice. You make a knife for your back. Prepare for battle. At least when I slay Arthur. I'll do it from the front. We had given our fellow Celts back their weapons and time for counsel. Would logic now prevail? I dared not predict that answer. You're agreed? Yes, it makes sense. We forget our quarrels and join together against Kurdig. This is the way of Rome. It is counseled by the gods. The gods are wiser than I thought. Very well, what I propose. One point! Why are you? You've agreed to combine our forces, yes. But why should you command them? 
Only he can. By whose word, not mine. No! You go by the law. Not an hour ago, I spared all your lives. I had you all at my mercy. I gave you back your swords. <laughs> a sign of your weakness. Let us see if your sword arm shows the same flow. Unless any of the others wants to try his chance against you. Who wins leads? That's the law. Small boys decide things so. We are grown men. Small boys are not afraid to fight. <laughs> It wasn't the gods, it was your own stupidity attacking Kurdig on his terms. Well, now we fight on my terms! Your terms! Listen to me, men of the cults! The day is not lost! Nobody listens to you! Friend of the old men, killing her to the half! Gather to me! There is a way! When did Arthur lose a battle? When did he ever fight a battle? Cults! This is I! Mark of Cornwall! Slayer of many! We attack again! And this time we scatter them like chaff before the wind. If Bursting could kill Cardi, this oak would have talked him to death years ago. Who Today you talk to me like that? Hermit! You with that, take all the spears you can carry. With that! Arrest with Kai! All the spears! All alone, eh? No doubt your brave allies have found urgent duties back at the home fires. Have you come to fight? Or talk all day like an old woman? Fight! <laughs>
I will put at your disposal half my men. And you, Ambrose? Rome always loved a winner. You may have a quarter of mine. I, too, have dogs biting at my heels. Dark? I shall have to think about it very carefully. There are many things to be considered. Anyway, after today, you may not need so many. You did well. Almost too well. They were on us sooner than I expected. Well, at least the action got us some men. Without that, we would have still been talking when the snow came. Where the grass lies low and the wind sweeps wide, where the black ducks fly by the green lake side. And so, for a brief while, no enemy threatened us, and we could savor a time of domestic tranquility. We could also pursue the civil matters necessary to bind the friendly tribes together. Despite our different ways of life, I believed peace was a common goal. Thus, no overture of friendship could be refused. To Europe! But as I was reminded one day, unruly passions would continue to dictate our behavior, as often as sweet reason. Tend to go around attacking people like that, I suggest you take a few lessons. From you? That's why I'm here. I just wanted you to see how bad I am. Everyone knows of your reputation as a warrior, Arthur. Thought I should learn from the best. Couldn't your father teach you? Father's dead. What about the other men in your village? They're all as good as I am. As you saw for yourself earlier on, I couldn't hold my own against a newborn calf. This village of yours, it's way to the north. Across the hills, then six, seven days' ride. It's almost to the land of the Picts. It's close. Too close. They're always attacking and plundering the village. Teach me to fight. You cannot learn that by sundown. It takes time. I'll practice night and day. Even the greatest warrior needs sleep. And even the greatest warrior needs help against the pits. Teach me to fight it, and I will return to my village and teach them what I have learned. Then instead of being weak sisters, we will be a granite stone in the wall of your defenses. The fast. Shouldn't take long to make a worry of you. <laughs> Stop! Your wrist is too tight. Keep it loose. Flexible. That will give you control and direction. Come! Here. Just here. Under the breastbone. Don't draw back. That tells your enemy your mind. Again. You just lost an arm. You must hold your shield arm higher. Your shield arm should be as deft and quick as the one that holds the sword. Watch my eyes. Anticipate. You tried to watch the flight of the spear. You 
you do that with a seasoned warrior and you're a dead man before it leaves his hand. Now. Good. Good. An hour's practice with that youngster was like fighting ten battles. He'll be good. When his strength matches his skill, he'll be the one to bind his axe. And that time won't be far off. He grazed my arm with a spear this morning. <laughs> That came from the forest. He's gonna wear himself out. I tell you, there's something wrong with the boy. He's keen, enthusiastic. Dedicated. You can't fault him for that. You didn't see him last night. I did. He's made more progress than anyone of his age I've ever known. That's good enough for me. You must use the sword and the shield to cover. Watch. Shield can be a weapon too. Watch. You try. Now, sword and the shield together, try and get the rhythm. Relax. Try and feel the sword, it's part of your arm now. Come. What are you? A nurse maid. I can't do better than that. I'll send you to play with the girls. the attack. Vary the angle. Knife. 
Thrust your enemy's sword arm upwards, getting close, and upwards with the knife. What else? Always try for surprise. Ah! Whoa! You're too good to take liberties like that now. A fighting man in practice has a duty to be careful. Sorry. Now. That trick you did yesterday with the sword. I'd like you to show me how you do it. Ah, uh -huh. One moment, love. Well, when you've lost your sword, again an unexpected move. Again. Enough! Enough for now. Go and practice the trick yourself. I'll see if you've mastered it tomorrow. I told you there was something wrong with that boy. You haven't created a warrior to defend his people, but a man with enough hate in his heart to kill you. He would have killed, but he made the same mistake as his father. I killed Mordor myself. That trick with the sword. I remember today when I did that trick again. Corin came at me with his father's hatred and his father's mistake. Corin's Mordor's son. His father was a murderer, a butcher. In his eyes, his father's a hero. And will be, whatever I say. Then you must send him away. And make an enemy of him for the rest of my life. So what do you do? Go on training him to kill you? Until I can find a way to reach him. Yes. Hate and malice are bad counselors for the fighting man. In the end, they will destroy him. Yeah. If a man has a quarrel, he must state it openly and not strike like a snake. His enemy may have things to be said on his side, too. I see. Can we um, practice the trick now? Very well. You've dropped your sword. Now pick it up. Twice today nearly killed you. Tomorrow we'll be digging a burial mound. I won't be here tomorrow. I have to go and see Harwood. I need you with me. Kai, you stay here. We'll be back by nightfall. We can't have you idle, Corin. Since your normal tutor's away, you've got a chance to catch up on your axe work. Yeah. Right, now let's see what you remember. And again. 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 Tell me what you're made of. Again. This move. And that one. You've lost an arm there. Kai, what is it? It's different today, isn't it? It's always different when you're fighting for your life. My life? Why? I've just found out who you are. You're the wealth of that butcher Mordor. That was my father, yes, but he was no butcher. He terrorized the whole province for five years. Killing and burning! 
He killed a very dear friend of mine, a good man, companion in many campaigns. I swore I'd be avenged against Mordor's kin if I ever found him. I never dreamed I'd be lucky enough to find his son. That's a trick I didn't teach you. Now wait! You say your father killed your friend in battle? He did. And it was a fair fight. Your friend must have been trying to kill my father. My father killed him in a fair fight. That's right, Corin. Just so did Arthur kill your father. I'm a man. You could have talked to me like a man. Didn't need play acting. Yes, you are a man, Corin. But if men always thought as men, it would mean that we were already in paradise. I know I was wrong. But ask yourselves a question. If one of you were slain, what would the others do? Well, I don't know. You? I don't know. I give the impression that my youth was spent oblivious to all but the challenges of leadership. Let me correct it now. I was moved by many affairs of the heart, though admittedly none ever brought to a proposal of marriage. There would be time for that later. Of them all, however, there was one proud, unpredictable young woman whom I considered quite special. Arthur! Her name was Rowena, daughter of Yoran leader of the Jutes. Rowena's to marry Mark of Cornwall. Never. <laughs> Rowena could never stomach a man like that. Besides, her father can't stand the sight of him. Ah, it's true, I tell you. I just heard it from one of Mark's men. When's the wedding to be? Soon. You better go down there and do something about it. Why should I do anything about it? Nothing to do with me. Oh, I see. She can't see what a pig the man is. True. And if her father's willing to deliver his daughter into the hands of a man like that, that's his business. Of course. It's their choice. Right. She wants to ruin her life. That's her funeral. Uh, will you be going then? Hmm? You've been invited to the marriage feast. Oh. <laughs> Too slack. This is supposed to be a warning system. One of these nights we'll all be slain in our beds. Get it seen to. It wasn't my affair. Rowena had the right to do with her life as she would. Yet I admit to mixed emotions that drove me to thoughts and actions unlike those of the Arthur I thought myself to be. Was I jealous? Of Cornwall? <laughs> Mad? Maybe. But something did have to be done about it. What news? Nothing much. The cousins Gareth and Gawain are feuding again. Are they not? Half a dozen Saxons slipped in from the coast through Yorath's territory. Yeah. What was that? Hmm? A 
about Saxons breaking through Yorath's territory? Nothing. Five or six of them. Nothing? What do you mean, nothing? A few have been slipping past Yorath for years. The enormous cattle traders. A gap like that could alter the whole balance of our defenses. The whole balance of what? It must be plugged. The rot must be stopped. <laughs> That's not the worst of it, either. Once Mark has got my land, he'll be more powerful than I am. Yorath, these are personal matters. It came as a surprise that blustering Yorath was even more anxious to keep his daughter unwed than I, to close the gap. He stood to lose much of his wealth, while I, well, I now could gracefully make a bargain with this ruler, recently come from Germania. In your defenses, if I agree to attend that no soul of a gap, would you break up the betrothal? It's none of my affair. But I'll try it. Oh, good! Good! <laughs> So with Yorath's blessing, Lud and I set off for Cornwall's village, where the festivities were already well underway. Ah, Lud, how welcome you are. Isn't it good to see them, Rowena? It is. <laughs> Some refreshment for our guests. They've come a long way to offer us their good wishes. You'll stay for the wedding, of course. No, of course. It's the uh, uh, day after tomorrow. Thank you. Now, therefore, make yourselves at home. My village is your village. And now, if you'll forgive me, arrangements, you know. <laughs> a bridegroom has so many arrangements. Will you look after our guests, Rubina? Animal, is it? It's all an act for her sake. She can say that. Look to the wine, beloved. We must not run short. I will, my sweet. And don't forget my cousin comes tonight. No, beloved. And you will not forget the minstrel. I will not. Dearest stuff. Rowena. I did not expect to see you at my wedding. What sort of a game is this you're playing? The man's a pig. I do not find him so. Man can change. Women do the changing. Mark of Corn. He can no more change than a wild bear. Love can do strange things, even to wild bears. Love? He's after your land, woman. Thank you. You're very flattering. Once you're married, he'll be as crude and as coarse as he's always been. He's got a temper, yes. But that's because he's never had any affection in his life. Mark has a lot of qualities that do not show on the surface. That's certainly true just now. But he's a king. I was born to be a queen. Queen. Queen of the hearthstones and the cooking pot. Queen of wash day on the river bank. He'll use you as a skivvy woman. Why the concern? Anyone would think you had a personal interest. I just don't like to see you making a fool of yourself. Why should you care? A girl might almost think you were jealous. Why should I be jealous? You storm in, breathing thunder. Determined to stop my marriage. If it is the reason, why not say so? It might be a better argument than anything you've said so far. It is not the reason. No? What is it then? 
Tell me. Tell me the truth. I made a deal with your father. He will put more of his men to stop the Saxons entering through his territory. And in return, I will stop Mark laying his hands on your land. Get up. You don't want her. You know that, and I know that. But she won't know it till she's married. Until she gets the bride along, I'm going to be as sweet as hazelnuts. And there isn't a thing you can do about it. No? We shall see. my lady. I'll inspire him. I'll show you what a swaggering hulk that man really is. All right, Mark. Let's see how you'd fare against someone who dared to pull you off your feet. <laughs> A challenge from Arthur! <laughs> Your own time. <laughs> like a man with a sense of humor. Where would we all be if we can't laugh now and again? Ah, come now. We've had our differences. 
From my wedding eve, I want all to be friendship. Come. No, here will suit me very well. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Lord, then. The only man ever to defeat Mark of Cornwall in single combat, even if it was with an iron hand. How can I resist such a picture of loveliness? <laughs> <laughs> Take note, Mark. Lud can show you the soft way with your lady. Ah, your beauty teaches me, my love. Mm, you're sweet. I do like you so much better with your beard trimmed. Don't you think so, Lud? Most becoming. Next, I think we have to do something about your hair. What do you think? Little curls, I should think. Coming down over his forehead. <laughs> For tomorrow, Rowena becomes the Queen of the South. Here's to the Queen of the South. And the times we had together. <laughs> Eat, drink, blood, old enemy. Bring him a man-sized cup. <laughs> Rowena, do you remember the time you saved my life? Uh, you saved his life? Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, here's to the brave maiden. We could have done with her at Montage Field. Hey, Lud. There'd have been nothing left for us to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fergus. Does your wife know you're here? <laughs> <laughs> Another toast. To the time you ripped off your dress to bind my wounds. Come on. Nobody's eating. I want to see nothing but bare bones when we finish. Yes. Nobody must leave the table while he can still stand straight. You're a lucky man, Mark. Believe me. I know. To the long days and the long, long nights we had together. Tonight a princess, tomorrow a queen. Rowena! Rowena! This time tomorrow they'll be husband and wife. I know that. And Yareth will refuse to close the gap. The what? The gap. That is what it's all about, isn't it? Yes, that is what it's all about. Beautiful, my love. And now, if you'll forgive me a moment, my dear. you could stay for the wedding. Come on, you clumsy ox. Show your bride what you can do. Come on. And that, having your beard trimmed, that's done it, you know. It's taken all your strength. 
I think I'd better escort Rowena back to her father's. You go on. I'll be back soon. As you wish. Goodbye, Rowena. Goodbye, love. You could have been killed. I could have, but I wasn't. I suppose you know you have ruined my life. Not now. It's two days' ride back to your father's. We'll discuss it on the way. On that journey home, I pledged Rowena my fidelity. A promise my dear comrades found amusing, rash, and unlikely. Right. And we will. No, the sport and hunt still excited me more than the notion of a wife and children. For this period in my youth, at least, Kai and Lud were all the family I needed. Two companions by my side whose loyalty was constant as the sea. I could not count the times they had proven it to me. Another wager. <laughs> I do recall, vividly, when I had to show myself worthy of it. Mark, you're looking powerful and well. You didn't come all this way out of concern for my well-being. You want something. Well, if it's men, you can forget it. Not men. Well, what then? I would borrow a boat from you. Mark had long forgiven me for ending his designs on Rowena's dowry. I think he was glad I did it, actually. But he was still ever leery, ever suspicious of my intentions. And in this instance, rightly so. I had to coax my wily friend most cautiously if I were to have my way with him again. Yes, perfect. For what? A raid? Saxons? A stronghold upriver. I go to all this trouble for one Saxon stronghold. It's a small encampment. Vital. A supply base. Since when did you decide to raid their supply bases? New tactics. Hit the Saxons in the rear, and they will ease off pressure on our villages. Who accompanies you on this campaign? Kai? Lord. Kai's leading a group of men to help Yorath the Jute against some marauding Angles. Blood is further south, with Hurwood, who's plagued by the Scots. Ah, oh, come now. You'd undertake such a dangerous mission without your two best men? 
I only need a handful of strong, well-seasoned warriors to capture this prize. <laughs> he was biting. Just one more hook remained. Prize? A Saxon supply bait? Arms, is it? There could be arms. But he would not be worth the risk of so dangerous a mission. No. Something, uh... More precious, I think. I can assure you, Mark, that this is simply an attack on a Saxon encampment. And I assure you, Arthur, that not only do I not believe you, but until you tell me the truth, the boat stays here. Of course, I couldn't tell Mark the truth, which was that a Saxon marauder called Hoxel had ambushed Kai, Lud, and me whilst we hunted. Came to these I escaped, but Kai and Lud were taken and being held hostage. The ransom, half our lands. Thus, another story for Mark. Why do you think they have an encampment so deep in their own territory, so well defended? Monastery ornaments, chalices, studded with diamonds, treasures of gold and silver. This then would be a dangerous journey for all. I had not the warriors in number or quality to spare from my village, so my need for Mark and his men. I had sent a messenger to Hoxel as a delaying tactic, but I knew time was running out for my friends' lives. I vote. My men. Fair deal. Half the treasure. You left me no choice. I think we're dressed like this. Wave. After we've put in a league or two between those Saxons. Your leader, Arthur, puts a higher price on a few leagues of land than he does on your lives. Tomorrow you'll be killed, but first, hunted. Now and again, the men need a little sport. Boat, Mark!
But you get it quite clear with you, Arthur. I'm not prepared to bargain. Tomorrow is too late. Now you go back to your Arthur and you tell him this from me. There will be no more talk between us. <laughs> No sign of them. And it isn't far to that encampment. You're not suggesting that we carry on. Why not? The prize is on our side. And I know exactly where that treasure is stored. What if the Saxons are still looking for us? sunset tonight. I'll stake a hundred pieces of silver and lose it willingly. You don't believe that, do you? Hmm? That Arthur's deserted us. Of course not. He'll come. Question is, will he come in time? gentlemen. The forest is yours. Come on, let's make them work for it. We're nearly at the bend. You better pull into the side and wait till it's dark. Go in now. The treasure will still be there tonight. Love and Kai might be dead. Kai's fighting with her with blood with Yorok, you said so. How can this venture affect them? They're held prisoner here, as I was before I escaped. Prisoners? Blood and Kai? Here? Treasure. There is treasure. Treasure counted in human lives. Hmm? Two friends. One who's as a brother to me, the other I love as a father. That is the prize. Thank you yet, Mark, for coming all this way with Arthur and risking your life to help us. Well, you would have done the same for me. Someday it would be worth paying their encampment another visit. I'd have thought you'd seen enough of it by now. After Arthur escaped, they moved us from the hut where we were imprisoned and shackled us to some trees in the forest. And on the way out of the main encampment, we passed what looked like a store hut. It was a store hut, all right. No wonder that encampment is so well guarded. Full of precious metal. Packed to the roof. Gold and silver. Probably all stolen from the monasteries they've sacked.
the joy of reunion and plans for new fortunes were short-lived. I had left our village with good men in charge, but without warning and breaking a long-standing truce, a tribe of brutal, drunken Picts had swarmed down on us from the north. I can't recall a time in my life when I was more consumed by self-doubt, anguish, and fury. They'll pay for this. That's as far west as you're going, my friends. great losses that day. The Picts paid an even worse price, but certainly no one profited anything. It seemed at times that one calamity bore another. Kerdig, the most belligerent of all Saxons, whom we'd once defeated at our gates, had not only rebuilt a large army, but was now seeking my strongest ally's support. Well, Rowena. This is twice you have visited me in one year. I came to speak to your father. He's out, hunting. We had word that Yorash and Kurdig were about to make a pact. I am not about to make a pact with Kurdig. It's already done. The peace is made. The treaty is sworn and signed. Kurdig and I are no longer enemies. You must be moon sick. You may as well try making peace with a mad bear. If a mad bear could talk, I would try that too. Arthur, I am war sick. My people are battle weary and blooded. I will give them peace. Father, Arthur is right. You stay out of this, woman. There you are. <laughs> so Kurdig is now your ally? Yes. But you also have a pact with me. What if Kurdig attacks me? Well, you can't expect me to support one friend against the other, huh? And if Kurdig should break your alliance and turn on you, what would you have me do? All I want is peace. 
Father, we can't live in peace with a mad dog. You know nothing, chicken brain. We've been invaders too, and yet we found peace with Arthur and all the Celts. That was different. You led in the Jutes, found a deserted tract of land and built your own village. Whilst Kurdig plundered, burned and killed, you settled and made no further demands. You made and kept your peace with the Celts. Kurdig doesn't even know the meaning of the word. And how can you be so sure of that, my young friend? Has anybody stopped fighting him long enough to find out? Was it true? Right, defense wall. Now come on, show Arthur what you can do. There you go. Right. Ready? One. Two. One. Two. Did you put a stop to this mad notion of yours and Kurdic pledging a treaty? Two. Yarth does understand the wrong he's doing. One. Wrong? Yes, Two. wrong. In you pass. Go! Yorath wants to put an end to the bloodshed, an end to the maiming and killing each other. Is that right or wrong? Well, the thought's right, but Yorath wants his land to learn to live in peace, or else it'll tear itself to shreds. Is that wrong? Keep your swords up. Aim for the heart. Ask that question to Kurdig. What? He asked him that Two. question. I was rewarded with a treaty. Two. He's right. Sometimes, somewhere, Three. this slaughter must stop. Four. Take a grip on that sword. One from the shoulder. You never kill anyone that way. What? Yorath has shown the way. Two. And I have not the courage to follow. Three. It's not a question of courage. Four. Would you put your head in the mouth of a hungry lion? Well, Kurdig's as much likely to respect the treaty as the lion would your life. Are you so sure, Lund? No. Would you stake your life on what? being right about Kurt? No. You can forget about Kurdig and the Saxons. There are others who would prefer the plundering and the bloodshed. Scots? Yes. By report, a huge army embarked in a fast fleet of ships. And they boast that they will conquer this entire land once and for all. How long before they're landed? Well, give them good winds. Two or three days. You say a huge army. How many? The campfires could be seen across the channel, stretching for 30 leagues along the coast. God, sir, take her wooden dirk as easily as a bear kills a fox. How could they muster such an army? The three kings to the east of their lands are united, and together their armies... Then they will find an equal force to greet them. Courage is forced upon us. With luck, we will see Celt fighting side by side with both Jute and Saxon. I fear a gift from Arthur more than a blade between the ribs. You're a bold man to bring me gifts from Arthur. It is no more than my duty. A shield? <laughs> I'd sooner take shelter behind a cobweb. I'd trust my life to a shield sent by Arthur. <laughs> Arthur sent it in good faith with this message from Yorath. I cannot fathom the wickedness of it. it must be very deep. But then that evil Celt is very deep. What does the message say? Yorath asks you to a meeting with Arthur at Yorath's village. Each leader to bring but ten men. Arthur would speak of peace. Stranger, stranger. He guarantees your safety. I guarantee my own safety. Get off your horse. Get up. 
Turns a stroke well. No hidden blades to spring out at a blow. Ah! Arthur was brought up with the Romans. They're still poisoned. Lick it! Lick it for your life! There are rumors about the Scots every day of the year. I'm not rushing into the arms of that barbarian on a rumor. But today, our messengers brought word that the Scots have sailed with the greatest horde this land has ever seen. That was no rumor. Wigoth saw them with his own eyes. While we're waiting here, he's probably sacking our villages. He knows we would not leave them undefended. And where is he? for fools and madmen. Let's make it only a memory kept alive by children's games with harmless wooden swords. Blood and lives wasted on warring could be used in making a richer, fuller land for all. This is a rich land. We did not come to fight. There's enough for all to share, provided each keeps within his own boundary. Let's draw up maps, huh? That's work for priests. Let us agree upon it like men, and then we can sit back and watch our children grow fat. But first, the hardest task of all, we must stop hating and learn to trust one another. Well spoken, Arthur of the Celts. How do you like your gift? I like it well. It balances well in the hand. Try it. As you say, we must learn to trust each other. Tommy, did it taste better than my shield? 
Come! Prepare for the feast. This is a great day for this land. It is indeed. I... Get yourself to the road, Dick Street, huh? Don't see the Lasting peace between us, huh? More wine, woman. All for the wheels of peace. Your strange companions. Yeah, I invite you for a big feast, and yet you both bring your own bread. If you are to be brothers, you must eat each other's bread, huh? All of you. What ails you, friend? Your face is screwed up like a shriveled nut. Oh, uh, merely an expression of curiosity. What revulsion is this? Revulsion? What do you make yours with? Balls dropping? Cow dung! Rice ball! Frog spit! It is good that we are being honest with one another. There's no tragedy that we cannot stomach each other's food. Mm. If it offends the palate, why not say so? As friends should. This should have happened soon. Here's to the new life. The new life! Did you know, either of you, about that invasion feat of the Scots? Invasion? Scots? <laughs> if either of you could lie as well as you fight. So that's the reason why you're here. Causing us friends, seeking peace. Fear of a common enemy. Massive hordes of fearsome Scots preparing to swallow you up. Now I remember, I believe I did hear a rumor that they were preparing a few ships to cross the channel. Yes, a handful, I think. Strange. My first report of them, which you have just witnessed, spoke of several legions. But you neither have concerned yourself. It was often nothing. They'll turn back? Not back, my friend. Down, down. There was a big storm, huge waves. Now they're all fish food. I toast the gods for their wisdom in creating this tempest and washing away the enemy that threatened us. But let it not also wash away the friendship we have found this day. We broke bread together. And now there's really hope for peace. The Scots weakened, the Picts hammered back into the cold of the north, the three of us in agreement. May all our enemies perish so. All right, men. Back to the wrong foot.
shoot. I'll be waiting, Saxon. We must have been mad to think we could ever live as one. No, lad. We were right. It didn't happen this time. The gods, it seems, as well as the Scots, were against us. But one day it will happen. If we're to survive, it must. Roll! 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 The river? Or do we put it to use against its sender when we next go to battle? No sense in wasting good weapons. I'll put it on the wall in my hut. Your hut? I should have thought the very sight of it would sicken you. By now, that barbarian Arthur will probably have destroyed my gift to him. The shield will rest in my hut to remind us all that for one single moment it was the Saxons who tried to bring to this land the peace they've never known. But let us keep this knife as a reminder that once we met and talked of peace, Falling out at Yorath's village had seemed a setback, but of course, the contrary was true. Celt, Saxon, and Jute now knew how much the other wished to live in peace. Slowly, step by step, this great island and its people were becoming as one. Each day as I grew older, I felt that moment drawing closer. One nation was our destiny. I might even hear its name in my lifetime. Mm -hmm.